For all new and current subscribers, welcome back to Resilient Love. Resilient is being able to overcome difficult situations. This podcast is about love, love tips on life, and how to level up in your business. Let's get started on the journey. So, you may or may not hear this episode, but I figured, hey, why not talk? Just have a real chat. Quentin's here, we're here, and this is Resilient Love. And the topic is pretty simple. All things are lawful. What does that mean when you hear that? That means that everything has some degree of law to it, which means it has some degree of order that needs to take place. So, the scripture reference for this episode is for 1 Corinthians 10.23, English Standard Version. All things are lawful, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful, but not all things build up. Another translation says for the Amplified Version, All things are lawful, that is, morally legitimate, permissible, but not all things are beneficial or advantageous. All things are lawful, but not all things are constructive to character and edifying to spiritual life. You know, Mm. as we are in the midst of a state of emergency, you know, the state of emergency actually has its own set of rules and regulations and things to do and not to do and so on and so forth. But are those things edifying? They may be legitimate and permissible, but are they beneficial or advantageous? You know, this virus that's in our midst right now, the coronavirus I'm not saying it's not a legitimate thing. But what I'm saying is the approach to this situation is not lawful. It's not constructive. What are your thoughts? Mm, My thoughts are that you must look at concrete evidence, just like a court case to me. You must look at concrete evidence before you make a verdict. And um, media outlet is not the verdict. Mm. Sometimes media nowadays... Media outlet, and it's not toward any, any, not every media outlet is like this, but a lot of media uh, outlets now today are lazy. Yes. Versus back in the day when they actually worked for the story and they did their homework. Right. And their sole concrete um, agenda was to bring the real facts. And I think that's the thing about the new generation versus the old generation. The old, the younger, the new generation, which would be considered ours and younger, is the quote-unquote microwave generation. So versus doing homework, they prefer to do homework on Twitter and Facebook feeds versus... Google searches. Right, mm-hmm. versus getting the facts. I had a teacher once in the fourth grade. I won't name her, but uh, she helped me. I would say if I wanted to be a lawyer, I've had great teachers that have inspired me because they did one thing. They taught me to verify. Mm. So fourth grade, I had a teacher. I mean, she really got on my nerves. But once I got older, I saw that she really made me a better person. Mm -hmm. Um. A better credible 
source. Source. Mm-hmm. Um, she literally made us verify every answer. Not one, not two. Every answer. So can you imagine verifying 40 questions? And they have to be legitimate sources. Right. Or it will be like a court case. Evidence is admissible, like Mm -hmm. thrown out. Mm -hmm. So you can work all you want to. And like, you know, sometimes when you get a lot of questions, like you get a 40 question test and, you know, you do good on the 20. You you do decent on the 10. Which is 30, but that last 10, you got lazy. Mm. So, choose the type to build on one character, two, consistency, and three, being factual. Mm -hmm. So, I think that's what's missing in today's society versus... um, you know, a decade or so ago in the media. And that's something that we got to get back to as individuals getting the facts. Um, With the coronavirus, I mean, there's so many. One thing there is, there's state websites. There's government websites. There's even, and even outside of the coronavirus, there's government websites when the bill is passed. Correct. When things are presented in the house, they affect me, you, and everybody else. Are we looking then? But at the same time, we just taking anything that the media says and run with it. Got to be a little bit more inquisitive. You know, we bringing up this topic because remember, <clears throat> our theme for this month is March Madness. And it's, it's very interesting and, and quite... <laughs> perplexing at the same time that we titled this month March Madness and there's a lot of madness happening in the media. <clears throat> Little did we know this classic basketball theme title would actually manifest itself into a state of emergency and cause a lot of madness or um, chaos. chaos in our in our country and again like quentin said you have to have your facts straight that's the point the scripture reference first corinthians ten twenty three, is reminding us that yes there are some things that have been set in motion there have been some rules some regulations some resources that have been set all things are lawful but not all things are beneficial. And with that being said, you know, I know we have a president that has not made the best decisions. Mm-hmm. Has not really thought about everybody's interests at times. But the fact still remains, as of right now, he is our president. Mm-hmm. So with that being said... You know, there's a lot of negative things going around. Of course, I, I'm not too fond of the guy, to be honest with you. But I understand that you can talk about a problem, but if you can't present a solution, then what's the point? You're a part of the problem. Right. So it goes to say, you know, if I was in a room with our president, what am I going to do? Not talk to him, bad mouth him all day? That ain't going to solve nothing. I'm mm-hmm. no better than he is. Mm-hmm. Somebody has to choose to be the bigger person. Mm-hmm. So if he see me step up, the law of reaction is he going to step up. Mm-hmm. Just because he saw me step up and he don't want me to outdo him in stepping up, he is going to step up. Psychologically, I just got him to do something. That you got I want. Him to move. Exactly. And that's what we're saying about social media and misconceptions. You know, people post their, with their emotions. They, think about the word madness. The first word is mad. 
Mad is an emotion. When people operate out of emotions, it it is actually a contradiction to the law. So yeah, the with with thinking about the emotion madness, right? It it's one of those emotions where first of all, you know mad is is basically being upset to a high degree, right? Not agreeing with something, etc. But madness is almost like an incumbent of having a just a negative response to a situation. If I could be more direct and give you all, because you know how I am about definitions, I like to be direct. And so the actual definition, it says the state of being mentally ill, especially severely, extreme foolish behavior. Wow. So little did I know that is actually extreme foolish behavior, March Madness. And we have seen some extreme foolish behavior even in our country. So... When you were talking about emotions, I wanted to give an example. A lot of times, that's really what social media platform is, an expression of emotions, Mm -hmm. whether people want to say it or not. And an example is, like today, my post was more so about ready, preparing for the weekend, ready for the weekend to start an entrepreneurship and fundamental reading and A quote that I came up with today was, my quote of the day was, developing the mind is essential to developing the life you desire. You can't have one without the other. Good quote. So, in essence, my posts or what I created on my stories today is essential to what I'm experiencing, what I want to be what I want to do. I want more out of life. So that's the natural law of expression that's coming out of me. Mm-hmm. Um, just like you have like all these books, like 48 laws of leadership uh, or 21 laws of leadership, John Maxwell books like that. Every, those books that gravitate towards law. Mm hmm. It's a law in everything. Mm-hmm. There's a rule, mm-hmm. a foundation, mm-hmm. and a reference point. Right. So, just like I was explaining a while ago, of you can interchangeably get somebody to do what you want them to do. Now, don't use it for a selfish gain Dang. or greed, mm-hmm. but to do what is right. Um. And I think that that means more than anything. You know, there are people I don't agree with, but you in life you have to learn how to agree to disagree. And even when you disagree and even when it's literally wrong, yeah, you have to figure out how to maneuver around the situation to make it great. There's a purpose in everything. And sometimes the purpose is merely just pulling the best out of you. So, with us opening up this topic of all things are lawful, the March Madness concept, it brings us to this, this bottom line thought. What is God's purpose? of bringing such a what they, what do they call it? I'm going to say it like I would say it. A, such a chaotic virus. You know, when I was at work, I thought about that thing. Before I came home, before I even talked to Q, I just thought about why would God send coronavirus? 
You know what I'm saying? Like, why? Because even, even when the it, oh, people... Why, why would he allow it? It's more like going back to Job and the Bible. That's what I was about to say. Exactly. Mm-hmm. He exactly. allowed God it. allows things to happen to test. Mm-hmm. Because he trusts you. Or he's trying to test you. Y'all can keep that word. Or, or he's just simply trying to prove something to you. That I am. Mm. I am. So trust you. Test you. Or. Revelation. Prove to you. Right. That's good. That last one was good. And so. Again, I was at work thinking about why, you know, why would a God allow it? What What's the purpose behind this? There's a purpose behind everything. Let's be honest. Like he, like the word said, all things are lawful. You know, I think the purpose is, I ain't going to say that's the sole purpose, but I'm just thinking in my head, like, what would be the purpose for a God to allow this? Just like I'm trying to bring it around the Job, story of Job. And the only thing that I could think of is let me get the world to realize I am. Come on now. Not Corona, but I. Since you're too busy, I'm going to shut down everything. Mm. And make sure that you understand I am. Come on. Not man. Not medicine. But I and the true healer. The true vine. You are the branches. I can resurrect. Mm-hmm. And I can put you down. Come on now. Choose this day who you want to serve. Come on. But let let it be known that you do have free will. Mm-hmm. But choose wisely. Because time is of the essence. Mm-hmm. And... That every knee shall bow, mm-hmm. every tongue shall confess, mm-hmm. and finish it for me, because I forgot that. <laughs> yeah, Jesus Christ is Lord of all. All right, thank you. I <laughs> want to get it right. <laughs> so, ultimately, I think that's the message behind it. Is to me, I feel like we've been through so many things. We've been through anthrax, SARS. Ebola, uh, so many different diseases. Mm-hmm. And in each one of them, I think this is no different. Don't get me, don't misunderstand that. I do think this is important. I don't take it for granted, but I do say that this is just another test to say, make time for me or make time for me. You use my line. Yeah, I did. So <laughs> it's 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 more of a spiritual purpose in the madness. It's amazing how so many people have been posting about this is canceled, that is canceled, this is canceled, that is canceled. And you know the one thing I can say is God is still on the throne. God is still on the throne. And he did not cancel the assignments over our lives. Because had he canceled the assignments over our lives, we would not be here. Because the assignment would be finished. So we want to end the episode by saying to you guys, number one, Get before God, the Heavenly Father, the Great I Am. Get into your word. Really dig into the scriptures. Ask the Lord to reveal himself unto you. Remember that everything has a purpose, a purpose and plan. The Bible says all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. I believe we are all called. I believe we all have a purpose. And that's why the scripture was written as it was so that you and I can both recognize that everything that happens has a reason. And I love how my husband was able to pull out God's reason and even help me through this episode that you know what? It was just a test. It was just a setup for us to come under 
the anointing of the Holy Ghost and recognize the position in which he sits, the great I am. So let's be reminded. Let's continue to pray ye one for another. And don't allow the media misconceptions of March Madness to hinder what God is really orchestrating in our lives. He's orchestrating the biggest breakthrough we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Remember, in order to break through, there is a challenge, but you will get through it. In order to break through, you first have to pass the challenge of the initial breaking, and then you go through. Be blessed. And I hope this episode gave you some revelation and understanding that all things are lawful, but there are some things that may not be beneficial or build you up. Be wise, be keen, have discernment in this season. Amen. Thanks so much for listening to Resilient Love Podcast. We wanted to take this opportunity to also let you know that you can help us by committing to a monthly fee of $0.99, cent, $2.99, or $9.99. Those contributions help us to keep this movement of resilient love going. Blessings to all listeners and subscribers. Thank you all. Resilient love.